Hello, good morning. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. So October 2021, eh? 21, take it to this, we'll start. What is the most appropriate in intervention? A 35 year old woman uh, presents to the emergency department with anal itching, which has originated over the past week. And she has two children at primary school and has noticed thread or when they uh, complaint of itching at night. So what is the most appropriate intervention? Trade or Mevin Dazzle, yeah. <clears throat> so Mevin Dazzle treatment of the charge of the trade or infection in adults or children aged over the years. Uh, it is given uh, It is given as the single dose, uh, which is repeated after two to three weeks in case of re, uh, the reinfestations and reinfestations. And has occurred. Albendazole is a possible alternative. Mevendazole does not kill the worms eggs. However, therefore, the cleaning uh, to builds in the uh, bedrooms and bathrooms is needed to clear them, followed by the continued period of good hygiene. <clears throat> okay, which mark uh, marker represent the force vital capacity on the uh, force vital? Uh, on the low volume load. low volume load, sorry yeah. vital capacity no? so vital capacity the place uh, a two uh, vital capacity A to D or A to It's A to C. A to C. Vital capacity. First vital capacity. Yes. First vital. Um, on this it will be B, sorry. In this it will be B. That is A to C is B, I guess. A to B, eh? Uh, Force vital capacity means uh, uh, which part? Can anyone explain? No, I don't have any, can't remember. Okay, that's it. Down is inspiratory. Up, uh, whatever you are seeing is uh... C. So C, that means A to C. Huh? They explained here the expression is A to C. So how can we say this, this A to C? This is the force vital capacity, which is measured at the end of the expiratory portion of the is, is, uh, is pyrometry for flow volume low. The uh, force per FCB can be reduced in both obstructive and restrictive lung disease. The ratio uh, FEB1 to FBC is used to evaluate the degree of obstruction. It didn't give. At the end of expiratory portion of the spirometry. Uh, as the represent the maximum expiratory flow volume, it is indicate the peak expiratory flow. Uh, although the peak expiratory flow is measured with the peak expiratory flow meter, that means A, peak expiratory flow. And then, 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 P is the force expiratory flow of 75% occurs at the points when 75% uh, of the flow uh, FBC has been expired. 
it is used in calculation of the f e f e f 25 to 75 percent which is used as a measure of small airway obstruction b small airway obstruction stuff uh, d is the uh, correspond to the force inspiratory flow 75 percent marks uh, it is usually used to calculate the inspiratory flow rate between 75% and 25% marks and is an alternative measure of airway obstruction. D. And this is the force inspiratory flow 50% marked where the 50% of total lung volume of FBC has been inspired. It is used in the calculation of FIF. Uh, 25 to 50 percent and 750 to 75 percent. I don't get the point actually. What is the most likely diagnosis? See? Most likely diagnosis. A uh, 27 year old man presents to the ED with the pleuritic chest pain uh, just to the left of the sternum and assists by the sitting up um, and leaning forward. He says that uh, over the past uh, few days, he has had symptoms of cold and temperature 37.8 and pressure, uh, okay, 123 by 82, heart rate 95, chest is clear. Here, everything okay. CRP is uh, slightly raised. This is a given below. So, like picture of pericarditis. CRP pressure. Hmm. Four, five, six. <laughs> B. CRP hmm. Elevation. PR, PR depression, yeah. PR depression. So pericarditis. Hmm. Acute pericarditis. Eh? What is the treatment? Anesthesia and colchicin. Both. In case of uh, Dressler syndrome? Yeah. Anesolo. In case of Dressler syndrome? Anesolo. Ecosprin 650 mg TDS. Hmm. Uh, Ecosprin not. I think say 300 mg or 600 mg TDS. Mm, 650. Huh? 650 MG only. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, uh, next question you can go. What is the most likely cause of a bony deformity? Huh? Like Charcox. A 67 year old woman, uh, the woman uh, is seen uh, as an urgent referral in the foot clinic. He has uh, had type 2 diabetes for uh, 15 years uh, and has developed an area of his skin loss over the medial side of his right foot, and foot looks uh, grossly deformed. Uh, she has so, uh, no sensation below the ankle. So, charcoal start to pity. A uh, 25 years old man is admitted to acute psychiatry wards with the delusion and that is thought to be a uh, thought are uh, being uh, the broadcast to others and that he, that he is being uh, poisoned uh, uh, by the radio waves transmitted uh, thought to the to, to thought the uh, televisions. He is withdrawing uh, from the cannabis and according to her sister, his sister, he has been smoking for uh, four to five cannabis joints each day. So what is the best way to manage this patient symptom? Eriprazole, clozapine, diazepam, haloperidol, or respiridone? Respiridone. Respiridone, I think. Schizophrenia. Hmm. <laughs> This patient have the cannabis related psychiatric disorder or may, may have been using the cannabis to self medication because of onset of schizophrenia symptom. Intervention of choice atypical antipsychotic respiratory symptoms improve gradually. Cannabis respiratory could be down treated and discontinued after a few weeks. <laughs> what is the most likely cause of this patient? Hematuria. Okay. An 18 years old student present to the ED continuum of hematuria. He has been suffering from symptoms of upper respiratory tract infection 36 hours. So 
So CRP risk. IG. What is the most likely underlying diagnosis? Underlying diagnosis, okay. 67 year old woman who is an ex heavy smoker arrived unconscious at the emergency department. She has absent breath sound and right sided uh, on auscultation. So, your is tracheal shifted to the towards the sign, eh? so collapse. So, right lower loop consolidation, uh, lobectomy, effusion, and then and, 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 and pneumonectomy, right upper lobectomy. Uh, right lower loop consolidation, lobectomy, lobectomy. Mm, effusion might be, but pneumonectomy. <laughs> so pneumonectomy. Uh, X smoker, eh? but ribs are present, like no ear shadow. Pneumonectomy <laughs> only. Yeah, no ear shadow here. So this patient, the right pneumonectomy as indicated by the total absence of the lungs marking on the right hand side and tracheal deviation to the right. Given the history of heavy smoking, uh, it is likely, likely uh, she has had surgery because of previous bronchial carcinoma. Okay. What is the most likely cause of this patient collapse? Uh, inferior QF, first degree heart block. And, and 75 years old woman who has uh, hypertension and ischemic heart disease is brought to the ED falling and collapse while standing for a prolonged period at the uh, at a funeral. She, she was noted to have brief uncoordinated uh, twitching uh, of all four limbs and to lose consciousness for a few seconds. So 152 by 80 and she sits up and postural drop 30. She also feels lightheaded and uh, heart rate 55, regular. So uh, unremarkable. Here hemoglobin, WC platelets, so everything okay. This is the inferior QFs and first degree heart flow. What is the most likely cause of patient collapse? So uh, transient ischemic reduction heart block. Vesovagal. Heart rate is 55. Vesovagal. Right? Yes, typical scenario of Vesovagal. And patient is brief unconscious, twitching all four limbs and loss of consciousness for a few seconds. Mesovagal syncope is the most likely diagnosis given this in the uh, given this is an elderly patient who has undergone the prolonged period of standing uh, at a funeral. The postural drop is uh, in blood pressure uh, to, uh, on sitting in evidence of autonomic dysfunction. Urinary incontinence is another possible pointers uh, because when elderly individual tends uh, to tend not to pass urine uh, when the bladder is full, which can lead to significant vagal stimulation, bradycardia and syncopal episode. Both till table testing and 24 hours CCG uh, monitoring could be considered the next investigation. <laughs> What is the most likely cause of patient neurological symptom? A 45-year-old 45, uh, 45 uh, old rough uh, sleeper is admitted to the emergency department with decreased consciousness and confusion. Uh, he is remembering in, in, incomprehensibly on admission his temperature 37.8 to blood pressure 132 by 82, heart rate 92 regular. He becomes much more <coughs> hesitant at, uh, as you uh, flex his neck. And auscultation of the chest reveals the coarse crackles in which consistent with the COPD. So here, um, okay, patient in a uh, proactin level raised. Eh? It does a move then. CRP raised, <coughs> left upper loop consolidation, uh, left to meningeal enhancement. That means like something TV. But history data is not correlate. And uh, CSA pressure 22, lymphocytosis, protein uh, raised, 
glucose low. What is the most likely cause of his patient neurological symptom? What is the platelet value? Platelet? Platelet count is normal. 62. No, 62. I think it must be lymphoma or something. It is not an acute presentation, right? But, but a sleeper, rough sleeper. Hmm. No fever. You think this homeless step. Hmm. So fever is low grade, yeah, 37.8. Hmm. And, 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 and patient uh, CSF they, uh, mentioned that left to meningeal enhancement and all everything goes to uh, CSF finding is TB. So no, 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 no. Hmm? Protein is uh, protein is elevated, but glucose is not uh, not that much down. It is down, but not that. Blood side, yeah. yeah. So uh, CNS lymphoma. I think tuberculous meningitis because proteins yeah. are raised, glucose is low. There is left upper lobe consolidation. I think so. Left upper meningeal enhancement. Enhancement also present. So this yes. is no meningitis. Okay. And uh, meningococcal meningitis. So tuberculosis. Tuber okay. Symptoms of meningitis with the lymphatic mark elevation protein level of glucose. Okay. Okay. <sighs> In case of meningeal TB, we give steroid along with anti TB drugs. What is the most likely cause of the patient's renal impairment? Most likely cause anterior T web inversion, eh? retinal raised. 73 years old woman is a cardiology clinic ward following the anterior myocardial infarction, during which she had a prolonged period of hypertension. Uh, the nursing staff are uh, concerned because her urine output has fallen over the past four hours to only 100 ml uh, into uh, total. Her creatine level is raised, increased significantly, and BP uh, at uh, 122.82, and she's pain free, uh, generalized when she's unremarkable. So, hemoglobin, WSO, platelet, sodium, potassium, uh, creatine uh, now a, a, a 889 on admission 112. This is the anterior T wave inversion. What is the most likely cause of his renal impairment? So, ATN, uh, ATN due to low, low blood pressure and uh, cholesterol embolization post parcutaneous PCI, uh, contrast nephropathy post PCI, and renal artery embolism, renal vein thrombosis. ATN. 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 Uh, ATN. They're not doing any procedure. PCI. Yeah. The mm -hmm. patient urine output low. So no procedure. That means uh, last three was not possible. There is no any sign of renal ventral. So it is. The period of hypertension uh, associated with this patient's myocardial infraction is a strong pointer to acute tubular necrosis as the underlying diagnosis. This fits with the acute fall in the urine output and, and rise in the setup creatinine level uh, without the sign of alternative pathology. Around 90% cases of secreting AKI develop because of hypotension, which may also be associated with the fluid depletion or sepsis, also seen in the atn related nephro to nephrotoxin, such as uh, gentamicin, cisplatin. Management supported the use of loop diuretics and drops have not been proven to impact our outcome. <laughs> What is the most likely cause of his patient's symptom? <clears throat> so lower loop uh, consolidation here, uh, sodium okay, potassium okay. Uh, 75 year old man uh, who is awaiting uh, placement for uh, respite care, following the hemiarthroplasty six days ago for fracture neck of femur. Is reviewed by the uh, on-call team. He has uh, severe cough and feeling feverish. Temperature 38.9, uh, pressure 105.72, 90 regular. Force crackles at the left base of on auscultation. So here, um, more or less, okay. Creatinine 156, CRP raised, extra left lower loop consolidation. What is the most likely cause of our symptoms? So hemophilus influenza, moraxala, pseudomonas, uh, respiratory sensation, and streptococcus pneumonia. Patient in hospital, uh, fracture neck of femur, 
or to prostate 67 then patient develop fever so hospital acquired like something hospital acquired i think so step to yeah, still go with the uh, pneumonia only huh? I still on. not put on ventilator no no not ventilator i think i still go with the uh, streptococcal pneumonia pneumonia consolidation cd virus Pseudomonas is the associated with ventilated associated pneumonia causes, right? Actually, yeah, most of the hospital acquired pneumonia. Oh, Lamro, what answer column came? Step to focus the community acquired. Who would I bully in a person? No, in case of pseudomonas patient has a consolidation. I'm not sure about the consolidation. Consolidation only the step to focus. So, lower consolidation is there. It can be present with anything and everything. Hmm. Okay. So, but without in putting on ventilator and all directly getting pseudomonas is unlikely. Unlikely. But for them, for exam perspective, they just want to say that after five days, it's pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. So they have made a fixed scenario in their head. So they have given a question like that. Mm. Epidemiological study generally suggests that the community acquired pathogen are still our most common cause of pneumonia between two or five days after hospital admission. After this time, the hospital acquired pathogen predominant. Example pathogen at this point include the <sighs> E. coli, Klebsiella, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus. For severe pneumonia, empirical therapy is the preparation <laughs> is usually considered. Streptococcus is very common cause of community acquired uh, after five days in the hospital. Uh, it wouldn't be expected uh, to be the cause of this patient's symptoms. <laughs> what is the most appropriate intervention to reverse his patient? INR. So uh, INR is 5.2 and, and yeah, uh, that ML. Yeah. Sorry, yes, Oh, blood loss. Yeah, 150 to two, 150 to 200 ml is uh, indicates CPR. So patient is 300. So we give PCC, right? Mm, PCC. So uh, it does okay. A life threatening bleeding upper GI and requires the reversal of anticoagulant for factor prothrombin complex to one, uh, two, eight, and nine tenths. And it do it doses a uh, charity to 50. Obviously, the short term, this will increase the risk of embolic events related to atrial fibrillation. Uh, but the balance of risk benefit is strong, is the favor of use of prothrombin complex concentrate. Hmm. What is the most uh, useful next investigation? An 18 year old uh, woman to the endocrine clinic for review. Uh, she is uh, 150 centimeter tall and much smaller than the expected, given her uh, pa parents' height. Uh, the primary amenorrhea uh, at pressure 145 and 90, and her heart rate 85, regular BMI 23, and prevertal breast developed are not occurred. What is the most uh, useful next investigation? Uh, FSS, karyotyping, MRI, estrogen, and uh, testosterone. Karyotyping? Karyotyping, androgen insensitivity. This patient is short stature, hypertension, failure to enter puberty. This fits with the possible diagnosis of Turner syndrome with a single X chromosome karyotype. Okay, we know that. <laughs> Turner is short, no? Hmm, short, whipped neck. This patient was long. This patient is no, no, this smaller than parents. Oh, this patient was short. I thought it was tall. I didn't know. This patient is small. Okay. What is the most likely diagnosis? Eh? Okay, question. 74 year old man uh, presents the dermatology clinic with a nodular and prostate lesion on his cheek. And he mentioned that it has developed slowly over the past six months. So the lesion is here on the cheek. Eh? So uh, a melantonic melanoma, I think so, seborrheic keratosis, solar keratosis, spider nevius, squamous cell carcinoma. Six months, long history. Mm, long history. So this something uh, scaly type like.
এ মেলানটোনিক মেলানোমা নো সেবরি কেরাটোসিস পসিবল সার্জিক্যাল এক্সেশন ইস হোয়াইট মার্জিন মাইক্রোগ্রাফিক সার্জারি ক্যান বি কনসিডার ফর কসমেটিক্যালি সেন্সিটিভলেশন অন দ্য ফেস টপিক্যাল এজেন্ট সাজেস ফাইফ্লোরিয়াসেল মে অলসো প্লে দ্য রোল ইন অ্যাচিভিং দ্য ক্লিয়ারেন্স অফ দিস কমার্শিয়াল পারসেন ইন ওয়াট ইজ দ্য মোস্ট লাইকলি ডায়াগনোসিস এ 19 ইয়ার ওল্ড স্টুডেন্ট হু হ্যাজ Uh, moved to the UK, uh, United Kingdom for India, presence to the gastroenterology clinic, complaining of abdominal bloating, flatulence, diarrhea uh, from India, which causes perianal itching. Mm, uh, the, the, his appetite is good and uh, weight is normal, abdominal exhibition is normal. So here, uh, everything is okay. So what is the most likely diagnosis? Celiac, Crohn's, IBS, lactose intolerance, ulcerative colitis. Patient complains the bloating, flatulence, and diarrhea. So lactose intolerance. IBS. Yeah. IBS. IBS. Bloating, flatulence, diarrhea is associated with the lactose intolerance. I think so. IBS, I don't know. IBS patients uh, complains abdominal pain, and pain is relieved by after defecation like this. Degree of lactose intolerance are present to in 70 to 90% of individuals from the Indian subcontinent. It fits well with the symptoms of acid, diarrhea, and bloating. It is likely bloating is this word used in case of also giardiasis. It is likely that uh, the patient's consumption of dairy and uh, increased significantly since moving to the UK. The diagnosis of lactose intolerance can be confirmed by the hydrogen breath test uh, after ingestion of 25 gram of lactose. Assuming this lactose metabolized by the bacteria within the gut lumen and there is the rise to exhaled hydrogen more than 20 ppm. Evidence of the ports that are high in the lactose is advised for, uh, to the lactose tablet also an option from the patients. IBS patient presents the acid diarrhea and perianal itching accounts uh, accounts counts against the IBS. Why perianal itching happen in this case? Yeah, no acid. Maybe acid. It will convert to lactic acid or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> with the bile acid the diarrhea, no. There also they'll complain of itching. Yeah. What is the most appropriate next step? Eh? Most appropriate next step? Surgery. Subacute right. SDH. No need, I guess. Right, right for. Huh? Subacute SDH. Sorry? Observation, if you ask me, it's very tiny. No, not very very tiny. Any symptom is there? I think so, okay. 72-year-old man presents ED complaining of right-sided headache. Increased tiredness and over the past few days, and he, ad- he admits to having had a fall after consuming too much alcohol uh, at a party a few days earlier. Just now, complaint right side headache and increased mm-hmm. tired- tiredness. It's maybe observation because no mass effect, no, no. mid length. Just it, this, this, the, this one, the bleeding, eh? subarachnoid hemorrhage. So, observation. SDH, SDH subacute SDH. Mm. So this patient has a small subacute uh, frontotemporal subdural hematoma and been uh, given he is uh, suffering from the lethargy and headache but without focal neurological deficit conservative management with the continued observation is appropriate if the patient develops the focal sign then uh, the risk sc- scanning is required she should be advised uh, to avoid the alcohol and continue at rest uh, so recurrence of hematoma is seen on the 5 to 30 percent of patients Hmm. Hmm. LTOT, how many uh, uh, times we give? 15 hours. 15. 
15 hours yeah so uh, which of the following the most likely diagnosis based on the patient ecg how many ecg they give already we found three ecg it is a 21 years old uh, man is uh, referred to the cardiology clinic for review after the uh, sudden death of his brother uh, thought to be due to cardiac arrest the patient is well and has no medical problem of notes physical examination is unremarkable okay so uh, arbc brocada hocm long qt old parkinson what syndrome there is no uh, uh, so brocada brocada only yeah this this is the mm. Mm. it is not uh, classical but uh, yeah. it is brocada only there is a right uh, the thing rbbb with uh, some st elevation is there Mm. Not Q T no. or Delta. No, yeah. So Bogada. By ki R B C bolte sen? No, no, no. R B B. No, R B C no. It is not R B C. Bogada, na? Eh, hook. I am sorry for hook. Death suddenly, eh? They didn't mention the during night or sleeping. <laughs> what is the definitive intervention for this patient's thyroid disease? Definitive. So our uh, thyroid up uptake is take small uh, area of the increase uptake adenoma decrease uptake across the remainder of the thyroid. So uh, we can give radio iodine. No? Single toxic adenoma. Patient, mm. patient age or anything? Uh, patient is 42 and with was tremor, palpitation past six months and takes no regular medication. BP pass okay. Uh, here, uh, TSS is low and uptick is taken, uptick taken, which is adenoma. Very added. Hot thyroid nodule, eh? multinodular goiter, and, uh, and single toxic adenoma. We can give uh, radiadine as a first treatment. Mm. This one we solved uh, in our group. I see this picture. Well, what is the most important intervention? Temperament, foam dressing, and intravenous flow, skin grafting, uh, topical, prosthetic acid. I think Debrabement. 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 Necrotic tissue present. Uh, 48 years old man is admitted. Nursing pressure sore affecting his right buttock, discharge, prolonged time. Okay. Parkinson's disease patient. Uh, nothing else. This patient has a heavy. Very large pressure sore with the extensive necrotic tissue. It is highly unlikely uh, this can be resolved with the topical dressing along the surgical deprivation. is likely to be required to expose to healthy granulation tissue uh, underneath the blackened uh, break uh, necrotic area. Topical and systemic antibiotic very unlikely to promote the healing with the large area of necrotic still is present. Foam dressing key, foam dressing topical therapies are the best use the granulating wounds, granulation, granulating wounds. However, uh, this presence, presence of extensive necrotic tissue. Okay. What is the most likely diagnosis? Eh? So here, amylase is raised 985 calcium low and patient uh, taking azathioprine. Eh? And a severe abdominal pain, vomiting, temperature present, pressure calm, and epigastric severe pain. So, pain created is like acute pain created. Pain created. Yeah. And the therapy causes, especially mesalazine, causes seven times uh, from as a therapy. Mm, Salvasalazine. Yeah, salvasalazine. Yeah, more. Yeah. What is the most important next step? A CRP raised, but others are normal. And 29 blood vision, difficulty swallowing and speaking. Uh, 
She also has diarrhea and vomiting. She admits uh, to having eaten some uh, preserved fish sent by a relative few days earlier. So uh, uh, now pressure is 121 by uh, 80 and 78 regular. is unable to accommodate uh, people and dilate bilaterally. Dilate bilaterally, not uh, unable to ac accommodate. That means ophthalmoplasia. Her speech is slurred and she, uh, she chokes when you ask her to swallow a sip of water. Her reflex appears diminished. What is the most important next step? Uh, botulism and toxin mm. can put yeah can you give immunoglobulin in it is treatment of gbs not botox GBS, huh? mm. what is the most important step before starting uh jolene donate so what is the most important step step uh Alkaline phosphatus measurement, dental exposure, dex, uh, isotope bone skin. Okay, we read the question first. 37 year old woman is metastatic <coughs> breast cancer reviewed by in the oncology clinic uh, following the pathological fracture of the left uh, humerus. Uh, she also has uh, the bo bone pain and uh, affecting left humor and lumbar spine, extra suggest of uh, further metastatic disease. <laughs> Here, hemoglobin low, and then the then, 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 then platelet low also. Uh, WBC. Dental examination. Hmm. What is the most uh, important step before starting Jolene Donate? So, <laughs> remaining thing, no need, I think, but dental is osteonecrosis. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's dental examination. Dental only. examination. The remaining thing we cannot uh, do this before the uh, giving. Alkaline phosphatase, uh, uh, you can do it, but it's not going to make any difference. Dental and is must. Dental examination means for uh, osteonecrosis of the jaw is a common a side effect of bisphosphonate, osteonecrosis of the jaw. Before starting the jolene donate, uh, we can check the if any uh, jaw problem. Oh. I think, I think uh, we read that in a uh, breast mats, uh, it is denosumab is the first line, right? Yes, breast mats, yes. yes, yes. But most of the metastatic. Other metastatic, the it's all a lender, right? The bisphosphonates only, except mm -hmm. for breast mats, where denosumab is the first line. Yes. yes, yes. So this patient is a 70 year old woman. Risk of osteonecrosis of the jaw, dental examination, and pray to carrying out any necessary dental work before jolentronate is common can significantly reduce the risk of this condition. Prescribing jolentronate, uh, patient with the cancer and comorbid condition, anemia, uh, coagulopathy, infection, smokers, uh, host taking the concomitant therapies like corticosteroid chemotherapy, angiogenesis inhibitors, radiotherapy, and head neck. And uh, patient with the <coughs> poor oral hygiene, uh, peri <coughs> peri <coughs> peridental disease, poor uh, fleeting denture, and history of dental disease, invasive dental procedure, and tooth extraction. <coughs> this is the peripheral lesion. 82 uh, orthopedic ward uh, chest x ray. Perform the patient is uh, reported become confused. What is the most likely diagnosis? Upper lobe. Huh? Mm, upper lobe, yeah. So it's little, not upper lobe. Yeah, this upper lobe, this, this margin, below this margin is the lower lobe. Okay, so uh, lingular pneumonia, lingular pneumonia, uh, right upper loop pneumonia. Maybe looks like anyone. <laughs> this may be aspiration pneumonia. Ah, they keep middle loop. Why? <laughs> this is middle loop. It's definitely not upper loop for hundred percent sure. It will be right middle loop only there. Mm. But uh, we previously see the picture of different types of loops. Eh? Mm. 
So we found that uh, this uh, fission above the fission, yeah, above the fission level is upper low. Right, right. Yeah. middle low pressure. Right, right, right heart border is not normally obliterated. Obliterated, yeah. This this is not obliterated. I think so. This they give the uh, wrong answer. Maybe right upper low is correct. Uh, they might have. You are right. Yeah. This, this middle low pressure is in is middle. right upper low only. Above the fissure, no? Hmm. Above the fissure is upper upper loop. <clears throat> what is the likely five-year survival? Mm. 29 year old man presents to the oncology clinic following a lab or, or cadectomy for a testicular seminoma. He is noted to have the evidence of distal lymph node spread and prognostic marker indicate the good prognosis. What is the five-year survival? And the eighty. The good prognosis that means more than eighty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, poor prognosis that means uh, less than twenty. <laughs> Distant meds, <clears throat> multiple races like uh, it not <laughs> Yeah, so it Patient is a uh, chronic calf being experiment lower limb here. Chronic calf with sarcoidosis of TB. Uh, what is the more okay? 40 uh, for a 74 year old man is uh, who has a Parkinson's disease for the past six years present to the neurology clinic with his wife. He is increasingly concerned as he is uh, refusing to take his medication because he believes he is being poisoned. And he has even his uh, Parkinson's disease and now uh, uh, schizophrenia attack. Uh, has even hit his wife uh, on a few mm -hmm. believing that she is trying to hurt him and also believes people are standing at the end of his bed. And taking uh, about him, and despite the attempts of optimized his medication, his delusion persists. What is the most appropriate uh, way to treat this patient? Psychotic symptom: clozapine, diazepam, donipezil, haloperidone, resperidone. Clozapine. I guess on the first line you can give this uh, quite typical. Clozapine, no? no? Quite typical. Then we give clozapine. Then clozapine. Yeah, they are given only just clozapine. Yeah. Both clozapine and quetiapine have evidence from the randomized controlled trial to support the use. <clears throat> what is the best way to treat this patient's sleeping, uh, sleepness symptom? Best way, okay. Here is B1C 59, uh, da, 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 okay. Neck size is 19 inches. That means we give just a sip up. Yes, the accident driver. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> what is the most appropriate next step eh? most appropriate next step uh, CSF protein is 0.8 high and uh, FPC is uh, 2.8 for hospital CRP is 69 but they didn't uh, any cellular component. Okay. 27 year old uh, man is admitted to the acute medical ward with ascending weakness, ascending eh, GPS. Which began is the lower limbs few days earlier, is now unable to get out of bed and she feels that his face is now becoming weaker and finds it's difficult to sit up in bed. Three out of five weakness, both affecting the lower limbs, four out of five weakness, the upper limbs and the facial muscles. He feels short of breath and lying flat and weight 70. Yeah. So what is the most appropriate next step? Mm, immunoglobulin? IBIG. Mm. But uh, the main problem is FEC, the, I think uh, the mystic, because 2.8 liter is too high for that clinical scenario. Mm. No, actually, they are giving this for this uh, ventilation or this thing. If two... Mm. Or less than 1.5, we can intuition. Mm. This part was there, mm. not the scenario, I think. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. 1.5 better here, more than two. Then, you know. 
medication. Prosthetic. Prosthetics like something. 72 year old man who is uh, undergone the previous hip replacement is brought to the ED uh, after fall. He is unable to wait here and is severe pain over his left hip. Severe pain over his left hip. Displacer is there. Hmm. To take us again, take care. <laughs> Maybe some displacement. What are the options? What is the most likely cause of this patient acute pain? So, uh, hip dislocation, migration of the acetabular prosthesis, femoral prosthesis losing, fracture, femur, acetabular fracture. Acetabular, no, this is the artificial. Hmm? Displaced. Dislocation. Uh, fracture, femur, prosthesis losing. Migration of the prosthesis. Losing or migration? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Losing. Uh, mm. uh, femoral prosthesis losing. Losing, losing means uh, yeah, yeah, displacement. Yes. Femoral cap take a short exam. Hmm. Maybe. Yes, I can take a losing bulb or not. I did a dislocation. This is the This patient, uh, patient's hip has dislocated no longer within the acetabular cup. The rate of uh, hip dislocation following the total hip replacement in around 2% in the first years and post surgery. The risk, uh, the risk is increased in the people who have undergone a revision. So, extreme uh, for forward flexion at the hip and the internal rotation of the flexed yeah. hip and both risk of factor are for dislocation. Once the hip is to, uh, to relocate under, under, under anesthesia, uh, the revision of surgery should be considered. <laughs> what is the best way to manage this patient into coagulation over the period of surgery? So 45 years old. Uh, warfarin. Patient taking warfarin. We are going to surgery. Lipid syndrome is treated with warfarin. So it's admitted routine polycystic tone. What is the best way to manage this anticoagulation to continue warfarin? Switch warfarin to aspirin, low molecular weight heparin, switch uh, warfarin to epixaban, switch warfarin to ribaroxaban. No. LM LMW. I'm not unfractionated to the this patient required LMW uh, uh, breathing the period of warfarin. Warfarin can be uh, restarted potentially some 48 hours after the surgery. Given the antiphospholipid antibody syndrome and suffered a previous deep vein thrombosis, she requires the lifelong anticoagulation. New oral anticoagulant drugs are not recommended for anticoagulation with antiphospholipid syndrome. Mm -hmm. New gula anti antiphospholipid syndrome is okay. mm -hmm. Which of the following intervention is the most appropriate? Eh? Most appropriate. So, prolactin level raised. Pulam na the question of prolactin level discuss. 45 year old man is referred to endocrine clinic after a road traffic accident and he has failed to notice motorbike uh, to, to that hit the side of his car. A examination in the clinic revealed the bitemporal hemianopia on further questioning, head pressure, erectile dysfunction over the past few months. So, production of a patient has 8,000 more than we give uh, cabargolin, aldopa. Uh, cabargolin. Cabar <laughs> Mm. What is the most appropriate next step? Uh, 71 year old man, uh, I be uh, treated with intravenous vancomycin for strep aureus and has been prescribed vancomycin one gram daily uh, with three dose level. After the three dose is uh, 50 milligram per liter. 
estimated GFR is uh, calculated 45 ml. So what is the most appropriate next step? Number two, I think, half, half. decrease. Mm, Due to her GFR is low, no? Mm, top level does mm. Top level is normal. Top level, they are given top level. Then yeah. okay, this... top level, pre dose level. Okay. okay, this patient is not developed in the arrangements, the vaccine patient developed arrangements. Yeah. Top level is high, so we can omit the dose. Mm -hmm. And check after 12 hours. Level. They cannot mention the time, weird, but it should be checked after 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So, patient bandcomacy level are over uh, twice the target level, which should be 20 to 25 milligram per liter per dose and continue at the dosing risk. Possible toxicity, it is uh, therefore most appropriate to omit uh, to omit dosing until a fall in the pancomacy level is, has occurred. The patient renal function should also be assessed to ensure that no worsening of the renal function has occurred as a result of acute illness. Okay. What is the best way to control the patient's spine, uh, uh, spine symptoms over the medium term? Okay, a 75 years old man is reviewed in the uh, cancer clinic following the admission under urology uh, for urinary retention. Previously, he had a previous stroke and ischemic heart disease and limited to the, with activities of daily living. So, uh, Stern uh, Cooperative Oncology Group 3 has begun. He has begun the anti androgen therapy. His main complaints of lumbar spine pain and extensive scan uh, shows the liver and bony mats. Hemoglobin low and 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 or multiple fraction. However, evidence uh, now that suggests that uh, single fraction radiotherapy is as effective for the patient who would prefer a single visit. Around 60% patient receiving radiotherapy rain at gain at least some symptomatic response, improvement of pain. If this is important, to, uh, it may significantly reduce the requirement for analgesia in this short term. <laughs> What is the most likely cause of his patient's hypertension? So left kidney two centimeters shorter than the right. Eh? So I think renal artery stems is like something. Yeah. Negative. Is it 28 women. It is fiber. Fiber. Yeah. Hmm. Pressure control, hypertension, then pregnancy, MLDP. Yeah, fiber muscular dysplasia. So, renal, like this, fibromuscular dysplasia, one type of renal artery stenosis. Uh, the average size of the differential uh, for a kidney with uh, supported 60% uh, renal artery stenosis is around 2 cm. Fitting with this ultrasound finding in these patients, there may, uh, uh, there may also be a mild hypokalemia and uh, proteinuria, proteinuria uh, consistent with the uh, chronic hypertension. Both uh, CT and MRI and geography are potential next investigation. It is ongoing debates that uh, renal artery stents is the best manage the medical locally with uh, angioplasty and stenting. Yeah. Renal artery stents are best managed with medically or angioplasty or stent. Mm. There's some indication to go to a deep angioplasty. Mm. If it, not, uh, if it is not controlled by three or more anti hypertensive medication, mm. and then last try to develop a fresh priority. Yeah, as evidence of fever, vascular disease, or MI, or stroke. And that uh, then we go to uh, stent for NGF first. Before that, we uh, manage the patient with medication, medically.
what is the most likely diagnosis? Hmm? Seventy-two years old woman presents ED with originating thoracic back pain. Uh, she has also suffered from the increasing tiredness, loss of uh, exercise tolerance over the past three months. BP hundred ten eighty ninety five regular. She looks pale. His pain on her palpation of the lower back and her movement is severely limited. And uh, hemoglobin low, uh, platelet low, also. potassium creatinine, a little bit raised, albumin low, and uh, total protein also low. Hmm? No, low. globulin high. Normal. Uh, no, no, globulin high. Globulin high, that means globulin high. Albumin low, is total protein high. Yeah, man, so globulin. globulin is high. Yeah, globulin is um, not too high, actually, it is normal. Not too high, normal, but uh, mm. upper, 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 upper side. Is, but ESR is high and uh, anemic back pain. Most of the multiple. Anemic is light eclosion here. Yeah. What is the most appropriate next step? Most appropriate next step. <coughs> Fifty-four year old uh, Jehovah uh, witness uh, presents to the urgently for review as he has uh, suffered a large drop in his BP and rise his heart rate some three hours after a gastrectomy. <coughs> Uh, for carcinoma of the stomach. He has uh, to cite an advanced medical uh, directive stating uh, that he, he is not to be given a blood transmission or blood component. His blood pressure 85, 70, heart rate 120, regular, regular. Hemoglobin now 75, WBC, blood rate low. <coughs> so so the, what is the most appropriate next step? Ask the patient's brother to consent and giving him the blood. Give uh, give blood anyway in the patient's and best interest. Give albumin, human albumin, IV normal saline, withhold all fluid replacement. Why human albumin? I think we'll give saline only. IV fluid or albumin? No, human albumin they mentioned. No? No, oh, human, okay. Human, you cannot give. Geneva. Yes, yes. We have to give saline only, I guess. Well, yes, advanced directive. We can't uh, this thing, no? More mm -hmm. ID. Shock. So the first line fluid would be normal slime. Where go home? Then, how about them? Yeah, hello. Hmm. Just keep only normal. Hmm? Given this man has a sight and advanced uh, directive against the uh, receive, receiving blood or blood product, uh, this uh, precludes the heat from the receiving blood in human albumin solution as a plasma expander. For the option given, uh, this then uh, gives the intravenous normal saline as the most appropriate intervention. He is clearly at risk of further deterioration. <clears throat> so what is the most likely underlying cause of this patient bronchitis? 22-year-old man, uh, respiratory clinic, he had Number of episodes of pneumonia in the past uh, four years and no now developed bronchic disease. BP pass okay for force crackles on the oscillation. So here um, hemoglobin uh, nasal nitric oxide yeah? uh, 159 per per billion. What is the most likely underlying cause of our patient's bronchic disease? Primary cilia number four. Nasal is low. Nitric oxide is in research. Hmm. Really easy. <laughs> but they didn't yeah. see any systemic feature like this. Like, yeah. Nitric oxide is low. Yeah. So, primary cellular disc. They're discouraged here. 
primary ciliary disc is present with the, with the recurrent upper and lower respiratory tract infection, ear infection, and increase the episodes of conjunctivitis. It is also identified as a cause of decreased fertility in uh, men. As a uh, cause of bronchiectasis, it can be identified by extremely lower uh, level of nasal nitric oxide. Extremely lower level of below 250. Below 250. Usually the it uh, only portion to amra pain hai. Level are increased in the excelled here uh, to, from the patients with the bronchitis because of increased host defense activity. Low level are also seen the cartilaginous syndrome and cystic fibrosis, but um, not below two fifty. Hai? Not below two fifty. Mm -hmm. Level is important. <laughs> मोस्ट लाइकली डायग्नोसिस 72 years old woman uh, extensive blistering mucopapular rash she has recently started sulfur salazine therapy uh, for ulcerative colitis <laughs> and now bp low uh, temperature raised pulse raised and macular skin lesions and acutic center blister found in the mouth uh, as well as on the stephen johnson uh, stephen johnson mm -hmm. yeah मेलेग्नेसिंग and initial percentage of epidermal detachment more than 10% serum bicarbonate less than 20 uh, urea more than 10 glucose more than 40 that means uh, heart rate 120 um, uh, epidermal detachment more than 10 bicarbonate 20 less and urea 10 and glucose more than 40 Management supportive, uh, special pet fluid and electrolyte balance. Use the corticosteroid uh, in controversial. Also, some guidelines support the pulse intravenous therapy. Mm. MRI shows uh, uh, like toxoplasma. Mm. Okay. Uh, immunodeficiency virus, eh, HIV, so toxoplasmosis. <clears throat> What is the most uh, useful test to determine the cause of this patient symptom? Uh, IGF is eighty-four. That means ray eighty-five. That means raised. Eh? Number two. Uh, yes. Swelling yes. affecting soft tissue swelling are affecting to for yeah. Easy to. Yeah, to determine. Useful next year, the patient. Which test is likely to prove most useful? Most useful. So urine blood two plus protein negative, LDS is raised, and hemoglobin low. That means hemolysis is present. Eighteen month year or eighteen year old patient has to present to ED with shortness of breath, lethargy. Uh, which has increased uh, steadily over the past few weeks, and he is currently taking rivaroxaban for the left leg dependence. Yes. Yes. Morning discoloration. <laughs> hmm. Oh, Where is morning discoloration? Uh, oh, yeah. This rust color urine complaints. Mm. Discoloration more marked in the morning. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That means flow cytometry fifty four, fifty five, and forty nine. Fifty nine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Life has also decreased in the What is in the specific? What is the most likely diagnosis? Eh? So, LDS is mm, mm, raised. Oh, yeah. What's 
So something like lymphoma. Pan cytopenia is there. Yeah, pan cytopenia. Twenty-four-year-old man present to the ED uh, with absolute uh, fatigue, absolute fatigue, shortness of breath, easy bruising, uh, which has origin significantly over the past few days. He admits to feeling progressively more well and over a few weeks, then pressure ninety-five seventy. Heart rate 95 regular. He has extensive bruising, evidence of hemorrhagic hemorrhage around his gum, and his splenomegaly on palpable of the abdomen. He has his pan cytopenic features and LDS wrist. So, acute myeloblastic, aplastic, uh, lymphoblastic, leukemia, uh, CML. Aplastic. Uh, LDS is raised, aplastic like feature, I think so. Mm. Pan cytopenic. Cytopenia, yeah. Because others. Mm -hmm. uh, this I'm is, not mm -hmm, not missed. Mm -hmm. AML. Why? This is. Uh, this is the no. black feature, yeah. Actually, for the APM. Why the question is splenomegal post over the AM, yeah, not AML, AL. Uh -huh. What's the hammer is here. Evidence of hemorrhage and gum. Hemorrhage is due to the low platelet. Mm. <laughs> 23. But plastic anemia is more relevant in this case. Splenomegaly may be present in aplastic anemia. Yes. Mm. Not easy. But they didn't mention any myelocyte, pro myelocyte, meta myelocyte, like or any blast cell they didn't give. PTI, no, they are not giving. They should give the PTI. Uh, ML fits here with the rapid deterioration in exercise tolerance and splenomegaly and easy bruising coupled with the pancytopenias in your floor. Marked elevation of LDS level typical for AML. Uh, DIC is. <clears throat> <clears throat> DIC is the common in AML with prolonged prothrombin in time, low level of fibrinogen and fibrinogen degradation product. It didn't give any features of DIC. And they should give the PTI Yeah. Just why not? Yes. A plastic, why not a plastic? Not raised in DIC. Idiopathy aplastic anemia does present with that in adulthood. It is associated with the viral infection. However, uh, here they are, the presence of splenomegaly is a stronger pointer towards the underlying hematological malignancy. Hmm. What intervention is the most likely to control her pain? A uh, 31 year old woman uh, presents to the gastroenterological clinic, complaining of intermittent abdominal bloating and pain. And she has had extensive gastrointestinal investigation that have uh, all been unremarkable. She is suspected IBS. So abdominal pain and blotting. What is the most uh, likely uh, con to control her pain? Uh, <laughs> decrease uh, ferment key, fermentable uh, oligosaccharide, saccharide, monosaccharide, po po polyps, increase so insoluble uh, fiber, uh, increase soluble fiber, increase lopidamide, and uh, central will give increased it is either a or c we normally give the soluble fiber or insoluble fiber insoluble, insoluble fiber insoluble, insoluble is content limited no, no insoluble fiber is content limited content limited is not soluble given so give soluble no soluble or podmer it is either a or c yeah yeah <laughs> Longest system, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but uh, their food diet is uh, low uh, oligosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide. Mm -hmm. Okay, I give soluble fiber. <laughs> 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 Food that are included in the uh, for for map that uh, include the map of cherries. Mm, Pencils and necklaces, artificial sweeteners, and most foods in the lactose. Following an structured diet, and uh, that reduces the consumption of those foods in the patients with the pain, 
abdomen than IBS has been shown to improve the symptoms in pain in 86% patient. How about 86%? How about the, uh, many of these foods are an important part of the balanced diet, making it difficult for many patients to maintain the adequate nutrition. It is difficult to uh, difference uh, in food intake. And soluble is a positive effect here. You mentioned soluble fiber. Mm, positive impact, yeah. <clears throat> what is the most uh, most appropriate intervention? Most appropriate. So, patch infiltrates across the lung field. A 22 years old woman who works uh, at his local uh, uh, stable uh, parents, uh, <clears throat> the respiratory clinic with orsoning, who is tough and productive, and mucus plug. He also has the intermittent fever. Her GP has tried to uh, try a regular uh, lodus uh, bacteriosis inhaler. However, uh, this is not improved by her symptoms. Her temperature 37.7.6 uh, uh, BP and which uh, throughout the auscultation of the chest. <clears throat> so here, uh, isonophil count is raised 3.1. Uh, right later, there's a uh, chest test uh, patch infiltration across the both lung field. What is the most appropriate inter intervention? Hydrous inhaler, met met motilipa, sumali jumap, and uh, so, prednisol and itra, no? Catch infiltration of the both lung field. Mm. Orsoning to control the asthma. Yeah. So, what the, can you go up? Up, yeah. up. Yeah. Local. Who watch the local stable? Mm. Some professional, some exposure. Okay. Yes. What is the most likely cause of his patient symptoms? Scenario, scenario. Yes, I worry, Dr. Rajavandu. 43 year old woman referred to the dermatology clinic with erythematous rash over his both cheeks and his small joints, polyarthritis, and three months. Duration, heart joints, pains, and particularly relieved by the anesthetes. His facial rash is given below. Yes, silly. And joint also. Yes, it is. Butterfly rest, acidly and small joint polyarthritis typical of the diagnosis. Erythema is usually seen around sun exposed area of the skin. Around 95% patient acidly has positive anti nuclear antibodies. Anti phospholipid syndrome is associated with the increased risk of penis thromboembolism. Corticosteroid at the initial intervention of choice to reduce the symptoms, remission, and hydroxychloroquine is uh, steroid sparing medications co choice of the joint disease in the acidly. Where there is the significant lupus nephritis, then uh, microphenolic mephotil is the oral uh, is oral medication of choice. Microphenolic mephotil, oral eh? medication of choice. Mixima. Mixima. That's your touch of it. Good. Mixima. This is the last question for today because I have a uh, cousin's wedding program today. So I need to attend. What is the most likely cause of his patient symptoms? Uh, cervical cancer. Okay. Uh, CA25. Eh? CA25, that means. Maybe over here. Sometimes peritoneal abdomen, that means ascites and steadily increase uh, gut to okay. And she mentioned that he had problem early satiety and intermittent diarrhea uh, for some month. And who is their GP has put down uh, to ir 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 irritable bowel syndrome. Mm, IBS, yes, ovarian. Ascites, so ovarian, yeah. <clears throat> so one twenty-five. Okay, 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 okay. Human epidermal protein four is the alternative marker for ovary, ovarian and endo, endometrial cancer. Human epidermis so epididymis protein four. 
Uh, alongside the CA 125 can be used uh, to monitor the tumor burden. The asset is seen here is the typical of the ovarian cancer. Okay. So uh, I think uh, tomorrow we'll finish this and uh, we'll start another uh, uh, pictorial session from tomorrow. Hello. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, doctors. Okay. Thank you.